Hi friends, Mickey from Figma here with another study hall. Today we're going to be talking about using FigJam whiteboards in your classroom, so let's go. So FigJam is a whiteboard tool that you can use with others to collaborate, brainstorm, run meetings, classes, activities, and things like that. So today's agenda, we're going to get started with creating a file, navigating the space. We're then going to talk about collaborative features that are specific to FigJam. We're going to go over some of the toolbar tools that are right down here, adding things to the canvas, such as images, text, and stickers. Then we're going to go over organizing your file in sections, and then talk about inviting others to join this space so then that way you can work and collaborate and share your ideas. Let's begin. So let's take a quick look over here. You'll notice that I'm navigating this space. The way that FigJam whiteboards work is you can navigate up and down, left and right, as well as zooming in and out. I just moved over, I saw these, these objects, these stickies that I have here on my canvas and I was able to zoom out. So let's talk a bit about that navigation. First thing you wanna do here is understand how to navigate this space. You can pan around the whiteboard by using and holding the space bar and while clicking on your mouse. So so if I hold the space bar, I can drag this left and right, and it's the little hand icon tool that you see right here that does the same thing. If you are using a touchpad on your laptop, you can accomplish the same thing using two fingers. You can use the two fingers to navigate that space. Next up, zooming. So there's multiple ways to zoom in FigJam, and I'm only gonna cover a few of them. If you look up here in the top right corner, you can actually see this ability to zoom out and zoom in using these buttons. However, if you want to do that a little bit quicker, let's talk about how you can do that here. So I'm using a keyboard and a mouse and I am using a Mac so I can hit command and use my scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. If you're on Windows, you can use the control key to do that. If you're using a laptop that has a touchpad, you can use pinch gestures to zoom in and out of this canvas as you navigate that space. So I'm going to zoom out right now. If you only want to rely on your key keyboard, you can either use command on a Mac and the plus key to zoom in or control on Windows or command or control on Windows minus. So command plus plus plus, command minus minus minus. It is going to zoom in and out in the same way that the zoom tool over here works. Let's talk a little bit about where this file currently resides. Uh, if I click up here in the top left main menu, I can go back to my files. And what I have over here on the left is I have all of my different teams. Because I'm an education user, I can click on my education team right here. So I have my team and under that I have different projects. If you want to create a new project, you can create a new project right here. It acts just like a folder. And in the project, you're going to have your files. So I can add a new FigJam file right here. So I can just go ahead, add a new FigJam file. I can also click up here and say new FigJam file. It's going to create create that for me and place it directly into my workshops project. So here we go. I'm going to call this Fig Jam 101. So I'm going to name that file. And if I click on workshops, it's actually going to take me right back into that project space. Another way that you can quickly create a file is by going to your URL bar and typing in figjam.new. So figjam.new. When I press enter, that's going to create a brand new file for me. And this file is going to be located in the drafts folder. The draft space is my own personal space. However, if I want to bring this to be more collaborative so I can work with my colleagues, my classmates, or my students, I can click right here and go move to project. That's going to bring up this little dialog box that's going to give me the opportunity to move that to my workshops project. Now I've moved it. And you can see that this is currently in workshops and I'm going to call this Fig Jam, let's just say 102 so we can see that difference. Now when I go back to my workshops project, I can see that I have the file that I began with. I have Fig Jam 101 and Fig Jam 102. If I need to delete one of them, I can just right click and press delete. There we go. So let's go back to the study hall file. 
Next on the agenda, we're going to be talking about collaborative features. Right now, I am the only one in this file, but if I have invited other individuals to work with me, what I can do is use a number of different ways to interact with them. I can go right here and I can click emote and with the emote tool I can basically drop some emotes on the canvas everyone can see that so if I have people just joining the file and I want to wave hello to them I can use the shortcut key E and then create this like little emote wheel and then I can wave to them as they're joining the document so there we go I can wave to them as they're joining the document I can use other features as well to communicate with them let's say if I want to stamp a vote over here, if I click on a stamp, I can come over here, I can drop a stamp right into my document so I can give that a thumbs up, I can give it a heart, I can give it a star. And what's really cool about these votes is that they're actually gonna move with the sticky. One other really cool thing here too is when I hover over it, I can see who made that vote so I can get a sense of like who is participating, who is collaborating in that space. So let's just go ahead and delete those. Next, we're gonna talk about the uh, high five. Uh, if I had somebody else in this file with me, I can actually wave the little hand and if we bring them together, you'll see them high five. So I highly recommend that, you know, when you're celebrating with your, your students or anybody that you're working with on your team, project you go ahead and give them a high five we also have cursor chat here this is going to give you the ability to communicate with others in your file so I can go ahead and I can say hey you know I could say that that was cool and some words are going to trigger these like fun little reactions so if I say you know slick you will see a fun little emote kind of be triggered there one other last thing that I forgot to mention is that when you're working together, if you are want to perform a timed activity, you can easily click the timer here and I can set this to be, you know, like let's say five minutes, I can hit play and you can see that I set the timer. If I want to tuck it away while working, you'll see that it's going to move up here into this top bar. I can bring that back. If I want to add another quick minute, I can hit plus. If I want to stop it, I can hit stop and then it'll stop that. I can close that out and then, you know, it's good to go. So you can choose whether or not you want a little sound to play at the end of that time. Next, let's talk a little bit about the Fig Jam Toolbar tools. So I'm gonna to scroll down here. This is the Fig Jam Toolbar. There's a number of different things here that you can work with. One of the most common is gonna be the sticky notes. So you'll see here sticky note, and then the shortcut key is S. So if I press S, I can drop in a sticky note. You'll see that there's a couple of different options here, so you can actually change that up. I'm gonna choose a blue sticky note, and I can say, hello world. Oops, let me spell that right, hello world. And I can add in like a little note if I want to, I can add in a few more sticky notes as well. One really cool thing about Fig Jam, as you're working on your ideas and you're sharing these with others, there's a few things that you can see here. I can see that these are all being attributed to me. If I want to be a little bit more anonymous in my feedback, I can go ahead and turn off that attribution. Uh, I can also change the size of the text. It can make it a little bit bigger. So I can say, hello world. There you go. If I want to bold a little bit uh, of text, I can select that and I can bold it there. I can also add links to this document as well. So if I wanted to, let's say, create a link, I can create a link, let's say, uh, Fig Jam you know, dot new and figjam.new is going to create that brand new document. So these are the things that you can do when working with stickies. Stickies are also helpful in that you can make them just a little bit wider to fit your text and you can also scale them up and scale them down if you need to create a little bit more room. Now, one thing that I have here, if these stickies are a little bit unruly and I want to organize them, when I select them all together, I can come down here and choose to tidy them up. When they're tidied up, I can change the spacing between them. I can change the spacing this way as well. And then I can also reorganize them. So let's say if I wanted to move this purple sticky over in that direction, if I wanted to change that arrangement a bit, I can easily do so and kind of have it that way. So I'm just gonna select those, I'm gonna delete them, and let's talk about the next thing that we have here. Fig Jam has shapes, so you can easily create diagrams. So I have here this shape, and I can call this step one. Uh, so now that I have this shape, no matter what color I use, it will be an accessible color. So if I go to these brighter colors here, you'll see that it'll use a darker text, and if I go to a darker color, it'll use brighter text. Uh, I can create multiple 
points, multiple shapes, just by clicking on the direction of that shape, as well as change those shapes, even though they've already been placed onto the canvas, I can select those all right here and I can change that shape. So I can change it to rounded rectangles. I can change it to triangles. I can change them to little folders. And even if I want to, I can scale them down just a little bit and move them around. One cool thing with this too, is that those arrows are gonna do their best to make sure that they remain attached to those folders. If I wanna create another connector, I can use the connector tool right here. The shortcut key is X, and I can create another connector to create that relationship between those two objects. And once again, I can change that to be whatever I want. So this is going to be really helpful when creating procedural diagrams, even just telling a story or making any kind of mapping of a process. So highly recommend checking out those shapes. Lastly, here we have the marker tool, but you'll notice that the marker tool has many different options here. So the marker tool, I can draw directly on the canvas. I can choose a heavier weight for that and I can pick any color that I want to do. So if I want to draw directly on the canvas, let's say your students have Chromebooks that have the touch screens, they can do a little bit of finger painting. Also here we have the highlight tool. So if you have some text on the screen, so I'm going to say hello world uh, and let's say I want to highlight that I can use my highlight tool to highlight that so even after the fact I can go ahead and select that and change that color and the highlight tool is going to allow me to draw attention to the various areas that are on the canvas also have here an eraser tool the eraser tool will erase all of those markings that were just made and we also have washi tape. Washi tape is a fun addition of Fig Jam that gives you the ability to draw tape out onto the canvas that you can then customize and change up. So let's say if I want to add this in here and make a crab tape, I can easily make a roll of crab tape. So let's say you're studying crustaceans and you want to uh, create some fun crab tape for your class. I think that that'd be a really fun way to engage. Let's go ahead and delete those and let's take a look at the next item on the agenda. So we've kind of covered a bunch of adding things to the canvas with the toolbar. However, you can also add in text. So let's say you're you're just trying to create an outline or you're just trying to organize a bit. I can add some text here. So I'm going to say once again, hello world. I can change the size of that text right here. I can manually input a font size if I wish. And I have control over some of the aspects. I can bold it. I can change the color. So you have some control in formatting the text. You can even make it a list set so I can press return and I can say one two and three there we go three and I can change that formatting I can do strike through or I can just kind of have it that way text adding on canvas super easy in fig jam next what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an image let's say you have yourself some images in a folder so I have some images in a folder right here and I can just drag them right onto the canvas what's cool about images in fig jam is they're pretty easy to add and if you want to make any changes so let's say here I wanted change how this crab is cropped. I can actually rotate it in this space. Uh, I can even choose to have it in a circle shape. So now the crab is in a circle. And if I want to swap that crab out with another crab, I can go ahead, click on that image icon, and then come down here and choose a different crab to be placed into that shape. So there we go. These right here are PNGs. If you are looking for the, the way to add images from the the canvas you can click on this little bar here click on more and you'll see images right here and that will also bring up the prompt to add images from your computer so there's many different ways that you can add them you can also crop the image as I mentioned before right here so I can kind of crop this down if you only want a specific area of that image to be demonstrated and I can also go ahead and add like a little framing to that image as well so multiple ways to add those images to your fig jam canvas you can customize and make it exactly the way that you want and, and kind of pre-plan your lesson with text images
So now let's talk about organizing things. We've been adding a ton of stuff to the canvas. Let's begin to organize things in a way that you might want to present them either to your class, to your colleagues, to your students. What I'm going to go ahead and do is over here, I'm going to create a new section. So a section gives you the ability to collect all of the things that we have now been adding to the canvas and organize it into a space. Here I'm going to make this section just a little bit bigger. And what I'm going to do is add in some stickies. So I'm going to change the color of the stickies so we can see it a little bit better, but I'm going to throw in a few stickies here. Let's add in one of those shape diagrams. Let's just change that to a, a circle and there we go. We can add another little circle and you'll notice that by adding the additional circle into the space, the section is going to grow to accommodate it. What's really cool is I can go ahead and let's move this over here. I can name that section. And even though I'm way zoomed out, I can see the section name. So it's very clear and it gives you a sense of what that is. You can also change the color of those sections as well. If you're working with your students and you want to create a bunch of sections so they have their work areas or if you're working on a team project and you need to create a bunch of sections for like a meeting, everybody has a space to kind of collect their own ideas. You can easily create that and I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to hold down the option key. It's going to be Alt key on Windows and on some Chromebooks, it's going to be the search key. Holding down the Alt key and I'm dragging and I'm creating multiple sections, creating multiple sections here and you can go ahead and you can name them the, the names of the people that are going to be working in those spaces. Once again, they could change the color of those and then they can begin to collect all the objects that they want in that space. And just like the stickies, these sections can be rearranged so I can adjust the spacing between them and I can even rearrange them right on the canvas to kind of go where I want them to go. This will give you a lot of opportunity to rearrange things. Lastly, but not leastly, we also have the ability to add in stickers. So we haven't really dug into this area a bit much. There's much more here to explore that we'll cover in another video, but we have templates, widgets, plugins. I'm going to go here into the stickers. I'm going to look for a sticker pack. So I'm going to leave some uh, stickers to be used on this place. So I'm going to grab one of these annotation stickers and I can drop it in here. And what's cool about the annotation sticker, I can scale that up and I can say, you know, look here. Uh, let's go ahead and find a little bit more fun sticker in the delightful toolbox over here. And the Jurassic Party, I think is a great sticker pack. So here you can even tell people to stamp their faces. They want to, to vote on something. They can press the E key, they can click on their, their little stamp and they can stamp their face right there and follow up. The last thing on the agenda that we want to talk about is going to be inviting others to join. So let's say you want to invite others to join your space. If you click up here, you can click that share. So right now, anybody with the link can edit. You can see that I have some other individuals here that can edit this document with me. I can copy this link and share that with them. I can also make sure that only people invited to this file. Let's say I want to tighten it up a little bit more. However, if you're going to be working with people that are going to be outside of you know your classroom let's say you want to hold a meeting with people who aren't necessarily big jam users you can easily create an open session so if i click that i can start an open session and now for 24 hours anybody that has this link i can copy that link and i can paste it right up here anybody who has that link should be able to join your fig jam document and collaborate with you in this space when they are joining they're going to be asked for like a name or they can remain anonymous. So that's all that we have for today's study hall. Check in next time where we will dig a little bit deeper into some of the features talking about specific templates for FigJam. And I would highly recommend that you just give this a look, try some things out and, and play around. And remember that FigJam and Figma are both free for education. As long as you go to figma.com slash education, you can go here, get very verified and collaborate with others on your education teams. Check out other study halls in the series. Be sure to like and subscribe and as always, happy designing.